After the elation of EasyJet's inaugural flight, there was a drastic fall in ticket sales. And Stelios uh, stood up on a stage, very much like this, in front of an audience of business journalists, announced that our fare was to be £29 one way, which was extraordinary at the time, and everybody laughed. Stelios started getting worried. You know, we were two months in, it wasn't looking good. And at that point, Stelios pulled out his checkbook and said, spend, spend, spend. In fact, uh, I think he said, spend a million pounds this week or you're fired. Our finance director actually said, 29 pounds is the lowest fare that anyone will ever offer in the airline business. No one can go low, it's not possible. Now, if someone had said, yes, but in 10 years' time, you'll have an airline, Ryanair again, be offering fares for 99 pence and they'll be the most profitable airline in the world, who would have believed it? You know, the whole model has fundamentally changed. Airlines don't make money anymore out of flying people from A to B, the low-cost airlines. They make money out of selling you other stuff. Yeah, the, 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 and, and from airports paying them to bring passengers to them. So, so the whole business model has changed. Our target market was everybody who paid out of their own pocket. Which is, a very, um, which is a very big uh, audience of people. Probably excludes every, excluding the large corporates, but pretty much everyone else in there. And we went after it with very strong, very simple messages. A low price. Flying from Luton rather than Heathrow, so we're cheaper. We cut out the middleman, so we're cheaper. We don't have a meal on board the plane, which is a totally stupid thing to do anyway on a, in, on a European short-haul flight. And people got it. And they said that we couldn't fly from uh, Geneva to Barcelona, which was our first flight from Switzerland, um, as we didn't have a charter license. And we'd bought a Swiss, airline, Swiss charter airline. Um, uh, and they, they issued a court injunction the day before we flew and said, you can't fly because you're not providing accommodation for your customers. And this is in Swiss Canton law XXX, a requirement if you're flying people uh, to this location. So did we cancel our flights? No. Did we give them all free accommodation in hotels? No. What did we do? We went out to the local hardware store. We bought three tents. We stuck them on a hill outside Barcelona and said, there's your free accommodation uh, if you want to use it. Anticipation. It's a very, um, very key focus for, for, for Emirates. You fly with Emirates to um, an African destination. One of the things you notice a lot is that the staff on their flights, um, you'll hear them speaking Mandarin. Uh, and why? Because Emirates can see that the amount of business being transacted between China and Africa is growing so rapidly that, that um, you know, that's a key area for them to focus. Now, easy cruise. This is, I have a soft spot for easy cruise. And, and a lot of it derives from seeing the looks on the people in Monaco Harbour when the easy cruise <laughs> ship came in. The basic problem, the fundamental flaw with this venture was the, you know, you take a cruise, you take out the frills to, uh, to invent what you think a new product, but in fact that product already exists, it's called a ferry. <laughs> so, 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 a few lessons learned. However, we did manage to sell the ships um, before we, that business went out uh, uh, completely.